Hey there guys, it's Nick, the ASMR nerd, and welcome back to another episode of Relaxing Reviews. It's actually been a little while since I've done one of these, and more specifically, it's been a little while since I reviewed a mechanical keyboard, the bread and butter of my relaxing reviews. But we have a new keyboard in today, and it's interesting for a couple of reasons. For one, it's from a company that I've never seen anything from before, a company called Havit. I've heard of Havit before, but this is my first experience with one of their products. Second of all, it's a budget keyboard with PBT keycaps. That's relatively uncommon. PBT is considered a slightly more premium plastic to be used for keycaps, uh, typically found on enthusiast boards. Uh, it has a really nice feel under the fingers, doesn't shine up so easily as ABS, and the keycaps on this particular board uh, actually have a really fun color scheme that I personally really like. But perhaps most importantly, this board has a unique layout that I have never seen before, and somewhat paradoxically, it is a 10 keyless keyboard with a numpad. That's right, you heard me. It has a 10 keyless uh, size footprint, so um, it's more compact than your full size keyboard, but it manages to pack in a numpad while it's at it and still retain all the functionality of the nav cluster uh, and all that stuff. So uh, I'm really looking forward to finding out whether that is just kind of gimmicky or whether it actually works as advertised and is usable for day-to-day -day data entry and work and that kind of thing. So that is what we're going to be looking at here today. The name of this keyboard, I should probably say, is the Habit KB 487 L, and it's priced at just 50 US dollars. Now, it does come with a couple of compromises at that price point, chief among them being that it has no RGB backlighting, and this is something that I was kind of upset at the Enter keyboard from Drop uh, about uh, in a previous review, but at $50, this Habit board comes in at about half the price of the drop enter, so it's much more excusable at this price point, especially considering the inclusion of the PBT keycaps. So, altogether, I think this makes for a very interesting keyboard, and uh, Habit has kindly sent over a KB487L for us to take a look at here today. So, without further ado, let's dive on in. And here we have the Habit KB487L inbox. Uh, it is a very plain box and perhaps the most polite keyboard box I've ever encountered. It uh, says over here, hello, exclamation mark. Thanks for choosing Habit. Otherwise, completely featureless, no picture of the board, no flashy colors, nothing, just a black box. Uh, this little dent over here is damage that uh, was presumably incurred in shipping because it arrived this way. Uh, but hopefully the contents are intact. I suspect they are, it's not a, not a big issue. On the front here. Some habit branding. Nothing on either end. On the back, simply says made in China and their website prohabit.com. Lost a little piece of cardboard here. Uh, the spine is the only place we get any kind of information. And this is a sticker, obviously, that they put on. Gives us the model, KB487L. What else does it tell us? It tells us USB interface, gaming, mechanical keyboard, US layout, sizes, voltages, keystroke lifetime, cable length, which 
It's one and a half meters, evidently. It says here, not easy to oil. Personalized color matching PBT keycaps. So what they're trying to say is that the PBT keycaps, they repel finger oils. They don't shine up the same way that ABS caps do. But uh, something's lost in translation there a little bit. Um, uh, Anti-ghosting keys 89 key layout, which is one of the unique selling points of this board. And key rollover, that kind of stuff. Supports Windows from 2000 all the way up to Windows 10. No Mac OS support by the looks of it. Okay, well, that's all there is to see there, so let's open it up. fancy going on inside. We've got some pretty minimal padding around the edges in the form of just this, it's not even padding, it's like just cardboard buffering basically. And, uh, and the board's right here, uh, nestled within its soft foamy bag. So we'll have to lift that out before we can see anything else here. You notice on the outside, I didn't actually say anything about the switches. This board comes with red switches of some kind. I haven't the faintest clue uh, what make, but we're going to find out. things in here. Oops. <laughs> like or thumbs down. It says here, are you unhappy with our product? Our customer service agents, blah, 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 etc. Contact us. P.S. We have an 18 month warranty. That is longer than is typical for a budget keyboard. A year is typical, if that. Um, and they provide all the support information here. So that's that's actually really good that they're forthcoming with that and that they do offer a longer warranty. That's somewhat unexpected. And uh, hey, we're super pumped you like our products. We love making our customers happy. Smiley face. <laughs> and uh, yeah, you can go do a review and that kind of stuff. Of course, they don't offer anything for that. <laughs> okay, this is they're, they're they're going for something here. Chat about your experience with family, friends, even the barista at the coffee shop. Uh, pro tip: you guys don't talk to the barista at the coffee shop about your mechanical keyboard unless they're into that. But I bet you, I bet you, uh, that would be a pretty painful experience for many. Um, and then, and then, uh, we have a user's manual here, which, uh, we have English and then we have Chinese on the back, but overall, um, pretty impressed with the localization of this, this package. 
maybe not the outside where it talked about not easy to oil, but uh, we can see the layout here, special function keys, um, keyboard specifications, <laughs> connect them with the computer, turn on the computer, plug in the keyboard, you're good. <laughs> uh, yeah, we've got media keys on here, win lock. Um, uh, oh, num lock is under the, the backspace key. Okay. That's good to know. <laughs> also, guys, no hot tips here, but we do have some warm tips. Warm tips. It's the opposite of frosted tips. <laughs> okay, so maybe the, the localization is slightly lacking, but, you know. Uh, generally speaking, I'm, I'm not... Uh, too, not too worried about that. Certainly, uh, par for the course, really, with this, this kind of board. Okay, so, uh, first thing I noticed here, you probably noticed already too, is that, uh, the keyboard, or the cable, pardon me, is braided. And it's a nice braiding. It feels robust. It's not rough or scratchy. Um, but it doesn't feel so stiff that it's going to be problematic. Uh, on this end, we've just got this kind of gamery looking molded USB housing. Uh, USB-A connector, of course. Uh, no branding or anything on there. Uh, we've got the typical ferrite choke. We've got a meter and a half of coiled cable. And then... Oh dear. Oh dear. It's connected to the keyboard and cannot be removed. Uh, in all honesty, that's, that's what I expected, but, um, it would be really nice if it wasn't connected to the keyboard and it could be removed, um, but as you can see, it is affixed right here with no option to remove it, but kudos Kudos to have it for a nice cable, at least, a high-quality cable, uh, especially at this price point. So, uh, what do we have here? We've got uh, a non-standard layout, and this is one of the standout features of this board. Everything over here, perfectly standard. Uh, everything here, perfectly standard. In fact, everything here perfectly standard as well. It's just that this numpad is normally over here. And we have a nav cluster up here, of course. What Habit has very cleverly done is taken the numpad from over here, stuck it where the nav cluster usually is, and then mapped the nav cluster to a secondary function layer on the numpad. And I think this is a brilliant solution uh, to fit a numpad into a 10 keyless footprint. That is what we have here. This is a typical 10 kilo size case, but we get the full numpad. There's no sacrifices made here. Of course, we have our F row keys up here, all that good stuff. Uh, the colorway that you're seeing here on these keycaps is um, pretty close to what they call carbon. Uh, you'll find a variety of, of carbon themed keycaps uh, in this kind of colorway. Um, and I, I personally like it a lot. I think it looks really sharp um, in a sort of industrial or sciencey kind of way, as the name might imply. Uh, we'll take a closer look at the keycaps in a moment, but first of all, first of all, let's take a cruise around the sides and the back, just get familiar with this case. So, the case is all plastic, uh, even on the top here. It's uh, kind of a matte black or dark gray plastic. Um, and uh, yeah, there's not really a speck of metal to be found, except I think this might be this badge. Yeah, this badge is metal. It's got a metallic sheen to it. It doesn't look unappealing. It's kind of a relatively subtle branding. I prefer it to be on the front edge there than somehow jammed on the top here. 
um, around the edge here we have this kind of um, squared off look, um, although the edges are rounded. That goes all the way around uh, the keyboard, but then uh, the bottom portion of the case kind of is under undercut at an angle. You can see. We've got this kind of uh, like vents or fins, I don't know. It kind of goes with the industrial look though. Um, and uh, that's kind of it, really. So if we come around the back here, we have what we would expect to see, really. We've got some flip out feet, rubberized so they don't slip. One on each side, and then up at the front we've got anti-skid pads there. We've got a sticker in the back with some basic information and certifications and a big old serial number just hanging out there. Um, it's all plastic. It feels kind of hollowish, but not bad. Just maybe not super dense. I suppose. Um, and as you can see, uh, we do have sort of a built-in uh, incline to it, probably four or five degrees or something like that. So uh, you can't get a totally flat uh, zero incline typing experience here, but that's, you know, it's pretty normal. Um, Somewhat frustratingly, really frustrating for me anyway, because I I stickler for these kinds of things. This this cable actually is inserted kind of part way along. It's not really on one side or the other, and it's not in the middle. It's like slightly offset from the center, and that bothers me. <laughs> Aesthetically, it bothers me. But minor quibble, really. Okay, so let's come back around the front here. Let's take a closer look at these keycaps and these switches, because they are an unknown, and uh, I'd like to figure out what's going on. One thing I will point out here, before we even get to that, actually, is the numpad. You will notice that the, the profile of the keycaps on the numpad it doesn't actually match the row in which they are situated. Uh, they are the typical profile you'd see for, you know, a numpad that's uh, set down, uh, you know, down here, which is where the numpad normally is, like this row normally aligns with this row. So this profile is actually the same as this profile, but you can see that, uh, you know, we get a bit of a mismatch here because the uh, uh, top row here has a, a higher profile on the main part of the board, but it's uh, got a lower profile here because this profile matches with this row down one. So it's not the end of the world, uh, but it is a little, mm, I guess it's just a lack of attention to detail, I suppose. But I do understand why they did this because they probably just make the keycaps in the normal profile for the numpad and they don't want to have to make special weird profile numpad keycaps specifically for this board, so I get that. Um, and it does mean that you can swap on any old um, numpad keycaps and it's gonna look the same, you know, in terms of the profile. This is uh, OEM profile, uh, which is just your typical, your typical profile. Okay, so um, the keycaps are made of double shot PBT, uh, or hmm, maybe not double shot after all, die sub, I'm gonna say. No, not double shot at all. Um, I misspoke. Um, you can see that uh, if you look in there, for example, there's no second piece of plastic for it to be double shot. Um, I do not think these are pad printed. I think they are die sublimated. Yeah, I don't feel any relief uh, to these these legends, which is to say that um, they are uh, basically 
died into the plastic. Uh, and they're never going to wear off because they're not printed on it. They are dyed into it. Uh, it certainly feels that way and looks that way to me. Yeah, I think that's what's going on here. I think, did it say that on the, on the box? I don't even remember if it said die sub keycaps. Let's, let's take a quick look. Maybe it said that. I'm already forgetting it. It says here. Just calls them personalized color matching PBT keycaps. It doesn't specify die sublimation, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that's what we're seeing here. That's what it feels like. Uh, I don't know why I put those caps on though, because I do actually want to look at the switches. Um, we can see here that the um, top plate, or back plate, I guess, on this board, it's actually in white, not in black, so that's kind of an interesting aesthetic choice, but it looks good. Uh, we do have some kind of red switch, and if I look very carefully at the branding on the switch, it says, oh gosh, you guys, I'm getting old. I think I have to take off my glasses for this. It says something I can't read. Sometimes it's really hard to see. Maybe I'm looking at it the wrong way, actually. It says something in Chinese. Well, not in Chinese, but Zhi Zhan. Zhi Zhan? Yeah, I think so. Here, I'll, I'll show this. I'll hold this up for you guys so you can see it. Um, let me get some better lighting here. Might be a little hard for you to see this lighting I've got going on, but I don't know. I don't know if you're going to be able to read that, but anyway, um, I've never encountered that brand before, um, but, you know, at least in the way it looks, clearly we've got translucent top housing, um, which doesn't actually matter on this board because this board has no backlighting. Um, there are other versions of this board that come with shine through keycaps, ABS keycaps, and RGB backlighting, and that costs, I think, about $10 more. Um, but I opted for the one with no backlighting, and instead the PBT keycap set, because I like the feeling of PBT. Thought it would be a little more fun for us to look at here. Anyway, um, but the actual, the action on this switch... feels pretty good. It's pretty smooth. It is linear, obviously. It's a red switch. Uh, not too much wobble. A little bit, but not, not an undue amount. It honestly doesn't feel bad. Um, so we're going to obviously check that out with a typing test in just a moment. The last piece that we're going to look at here before we get to the typing test is the stabilizers. Uh, I'm going to say there's a very, very small chance that these are lubed, but I bet you they're a bit, um, a bit of a rattly mess. Let's find out, though. I wouldn't say they're great, but... A little bit on the scratchy side, but that's actually a very respectable space bar. Uh, there's not a lot of uh, wiggle or key bind, like, sometimes if you press on the very far edge of the space bar, it'll bind, you know? Uh, but actually, this is quite well stabilized. Same goes for all these keys. So let's uh, let's just pull off the uh, backspace slash and unlock key here just to take a look at what's going on. Oh, I, I did mean to mention, um, these are quite thick. I'm impressed with the thickness of the PBT on these caps. There's no flex. These are 
really actually very robust thick keycaps on a $50 keyboard like look at the thickness this is thickness you see on much more expensive boards and keycap sets um, so to nobody's surprise these stabilizers are not lubricated see for yourself there perhaps no sign of lubricant but um, but they are pretty good they are not rattly and uh, they seem pretty well implemented so color me impressed uh, impressed by the keycaps impressed by the stabilizers uh, the overall build quality you know, it's fine uh, but for 50 bucks I really am not complaining. Uh, let's give it the flex test here because that is, uh, you know, tradition. So I think we're getting a lot of creaking. Let's go. That's actually less creaky than I expected. All right. Okay, have it. You, you uh, get another point for uh, actually a a more uh, solid construction than I, than I expected. Okay, well, uh, so far, so good, right? Like, this is looking pretty good, it's feeling pretty good, but as with all keyboards, uh, the proof is in the pudding, as I like to say, uh, the proof is in the typing. So, uh, we're gonna go, we're gonna take a look at the uh, secondary functions on here. We'll try out swapping between the you know, the numpad and the, uh, um, the nav cluster keys, just to see if that's cumbersome, if it works well uh, or what, and then we'll take it for a typing test. So let's get on with that. And here we have the Habit KB487L plugged in, and there's no lighting to speak of, as I said. There's uh, no RGB backlight on this board or anything, although there is a little bit of backlighting, funnily enough, which we'll get to in a moment. But uh, first of all, let's just uh, talk a little bit about the secondary function layer, which is fairly limited with the exception of the numpad, of course. We have typical media keys up here under the F row, and then over here under our F10, 11, 12, uh, we actually have scroll lock, pause, and print screen. I'm glad that they managed to put print screen onto the secondary function layer because I actually make use of that quite a bit. Uh, aside from that, we have everything that lives under uh, the numpad here. So by default, the numpad operates as uh, simply the nav cluster. So we have uh, home and end, uh, delete down here, those kinds of things. It's nice that they're all in the places you expect them to be. Uh, to activate the numbers, you hold down function, you press num lock, and I don't know if you can tell, you probably can see on the, on the video, uh, doing so actually illuminates the entire numpad. So that's how you know num lock is on. So there is <laughs> some very limited backlighting in the form of this backlight when uh, num lock is on. And then you can use this just as a typical numpad. Uh, so uh, I have been using it as such, uh, and I find it to be really useful. I've actually been doing a lot of data entry and that kind of thing, and well, it's a little bit cumbersome to have to switch back and forth between um, you know, the nav cluster functions and then the number functions. Uh, it becomes second nature pretty quick and function backspace is actually a really easy shortcut. Um, so I, I, it's great. Honestly, I think this layout is fantastic. I have no idea why we've never seen it on another keyboard before. Um, also, when you turn on the caps lock, you do get a little bit of illumination under that key, which is pretty typical. Otherwise, really not much to talk about here in terms of functionality. Um, I will say I did contact uh, the representative at Habit that I've been dealing with, 
and uh, I asked about the switches because I have never heard of uh, the Ji Shi Shang switches, Ji Shan, um, before. I'm probably just mangling that pronunciation, but. Um, I had never come across them before, and uh, I did uh, a little bit of research online as well. Seems that, yeah, they are basic bargain basement Chinese clones. They've shipped on some Royal Kluge keyboards before, like the RK61, um, and a handful of other uh, very cheap Chinese keyboards. Uh, most people didn't have much good to say about them in particular. Um, uh, the representative that I contacted was able to provide me a little bit more insight. They told me that they do have a four millimeter travel distance, which makes sense. That aligns with the Cherry MX Reds that they're, uh, emulating. Uh, and, uh, they told me they're rated for 50 million keystrokes. Sure. Take that with a grain of salt. That figure is probably not tested, probably just taken directly from Cherry's literature. Uh, they were not able to tell me the actuation force, the actuation distance, anything like that. Uh, from my, um, my uh, usage of this board, I will say they are not exceptionally smooth, but they are satisfactory. They're probably a little bit scratchier than the likes of a Cherry MX Red. Um, and they feel a bit heavier than red as well. Um, if I had to guess, I'd say maybe they're around 55 grams rather than the 45 of an MX red, but uh, I can't be sure. So uh, anyway, they are passable. They are functional. Uh, they are decent red linear switches, uh, but they are not exceptional by any stretch. So that's the deal uh, with these mystery switches. So uh, I'd say that we don't have much else to talk about or uh, show off here. It worked as soon as I plugged it in, Windows detected it, no issues whatsoever. Very straightforward functionality. So let's jump on over to the typing test so you can see and hear it in action.
So we've had a good opportunity to check out the board in great detail, inspect it thoroughly. Uh, we looked at all the secondary functions and the usage of that numpad. I told you a little bit about my experience using the numpad and also with those interesting kind of unknown switches. And we took it for a typing test so you could see and hear it in action. So now it's time to run down the pros and the cons of Habit's KB487L 10 keyless mechanical keyboard. And as you probably know, I like to start with the pros, the things I really liked about this product, and there's quite a few of them. Uh, the first is that novel space efficient layout. That's what drew my eye to this keyboard in the first place, and it turns out that it's really good. In fact, it's so good that I'm really surprised that we've never seen this layout implemented on other brands' keyboards. It really does what it advertises. You get a full numpad as well as the nav cluster packed into the footprint, the compact footprint of a 10 keyless board. You don't lose any functionality, but you save some space. It's really quite clever and it works very well. I found it quite usable. I was also really impressed with the overall build quality of this board, considering its price point. At 50 US dollars, you're usually looking at quite a few corners cut, sacrifices made to get the price down, but not so here, really. We had a very nice braided cable that felt soft and uh, uh, supple um, and uh, was of decent length, non-removable kind of a bummer. We'll get to that in the cons, but uh, a nice high quality cable. And perhaps most impressively, those nice, very thick PBT keycaps. They look really, really good and they feel really great under the fingers. Honestly, the thickness of a keycap and the material confers so much to the typing feel of a keyboard. Lots of people think it just comes down to the switches, but it's not. It's about a harmony between the keycaps, the switches, the chassis, the way the PCB or the plate is mounted, all these kinds of things. So the thick PBT keycaps on this board really do confer a feeling uh, that makes it uh, feel like a more expensive keyboard than it is. And I think they look great too. One minor quibble I will point out here, I don't talk about this in the cons, but um, is that on the uh, orange keycaps, I find the legends a little hard to read sometimes, especially in dim lighting. Um, it's not a major thing, and it could be my color blindness. I, I am uh, red-green color blind, so maybe the particular combination of colors just doesn't work for me, but I did find that a little bit difficult. Nonetheless, really excellent keycaps, especially for a board of this price. I'm also really impressed with the 18-month warranty that comes with this board. We've seen two-year warranties on other budget keyboards before, but it's quite uncommon. 18 months is not quite two years, but it's certainly better than the uh, one-year warranty that comes with most budget keyboards. And uh, Havit is upfront about it. They include all the information right there on a little card in the box, whereas many budget Chinese keyboard manufacturers, they might as well not offer a warranty because they don't advertise it, they don't make it easy to contact them, even if you did, who knows if they're going to back it up, but have it is upfront about it, and I'm willing to bet that they'll stand behind that 18-month warranty. And finally, the price of this keyboard is very hard to argue with. Um, for 50 US dollars, you get a solidly built board with some excellent keycaps, uh, a nice braided cable, a unique, very functional layout, and some questionable switches, but, you know, we'll get to that in a second. Overall, really impressed with what Habit is offering for the price. Over here in the cons department, the things that I didn't like quite so much about this keyboard, there's a handful of them. I already alluded to them in the pros section. The first is those no-name switches. They're not no-name, but they're pretty much unknown. I did some research about them. Very few people knew anything about them. I contacted the Havit representative. They gave me a little bit more information, but really not as much as I was looking for. 
I still don't know what their our actuation force is. I still don't know what their actuation point is. I'm led to believe that they're basically Cherry MX Red clones designed to emulate those switches as closely as possible. They feel okay, but we're not sure about the longevity of these switches, the consistency of these switches. Really, the name is unknown, so they are the ultimate very bo bottom bargain basement switches that you might see on mechanical keyboard. I also wasn't super impressed to see the non-removable cable on this board. And I guess I should say I'm not surprised because most budget keyboards uh, larger than a 60% board uh, do tend to have that affixed cable, that non-removable USB cable. But I really think that Havit could uh, elevate this board, make it feel just a bit more premium, help it stand out a little bit more in a crowded budget market by making that nice braided cable easily removable. And finally, uh, I'm a little disappointed that there's no backlight on this board. Again, we can't ask for the world, <laughs> like, considering uh, the other features of this board, having an RGB backlight would actually be really impressive at this price point. The fact that it doesn't is a bit of a bummer. It means that it's not going to be uh, a great fit for some people, but, um, you know, it is somewhat understandable. I should point out, Havit does make a uh, 10 keyless board with the same novel layout, um, slightly different case, and with shine through ABS caps that has RGB backlighting. It costs about 10 or $20 more, I think. So if you like this layout, but you really need that backlight and you're not, uh, you know, um, really needing those PBT keycaps, then uh, maybe take a look at their other models that offer the backlight. They do exist. But a white backlight, at least, would have been really nice to see on this model. It does have it under the numpad. I just wish it had it under the whole board. That would have really helped seal the deal. So what, then, is my final verdict on Havit's KB487L 10 keyless mechanical keyboard? Well, overall, I'm actually quite impressed. I think that if you are the kind of person that really needs a numpad for your work or whatever, but you're short on desk space, I think this keyboard offers a really great solution, a very functional and uh, unique layout that I've never seen elsewhere. Uh, it's also quite well made for its price point. The case feels solid. There was very little flex, very little creaking of the plastics. And of course, those keycaps are surprisingly thick. Uh, those PBT keycaps really are a standout part of this board. They look uh, and feel great to type on. Speaking of feeling great to type on, I found the overall typing experience on this board was better than most budget boards at this price point. Uh, the stabilizers performed much better than I expected. Those keycaps, again, really confer a solidity to the typing experience. The only fly in the ointment, so to speak, <laughs> is those switches. Yeah. They felt okay to me. They felt like competent, if maybe slightly scratchy and heavy, Cherry MX Reds, but maybe you don't mind that. The only issue with them is that they are a, a relatively unknown make, this Jishan I've never heard of before. Uh, most people seem to have not heard of it before, and we don't really know what they're going to stand up uh, like in the long term, what their long term durability and performance is going to be like. So bear that in mind. But again, budget board, 50 bucks, you know, it's not a huge gamble. And of course, if you're looking for RGB backlighting, well, you're going to have to look elsewhere because it ain't here. But again, given the price point, I can't be too very mad about it. So if this keyboard ticks the boxes for you, if it, uh, if you're looking for, uh, you know, full-size functionality in a 10 keyless footprint, 
you don't mind losing that backlight and you'd like some really nice keycaps all at the budget price of 50 US bucks, then the Habit KB487L is absolutely worth your consideration. And that, my friends, brings us to the end of another relaxing review. Special thanks, of course, to Habit for sending over the review sample of the KB487L that we took a look at here today. And of course, if you're interested in picking up one of these boards for yourself, please head on down into the video description. There is a link there where you can do just that. And a portion of your purchase may come back to support the channel if you do buy through that link, which of course I appreciate very much. So thank you if you do do that. And of course, thank you to all of you for watching. I hope you found this video informative and I hope you found it relaxing. And I look very forward to having you back here next time for another episode of Relaxing Reviews. Bye for now, guys. <laughs>